everyone, welcome back to IGN Live at Gamescom. I'm here with Bungie's Eric Osborne. Nice to meet you. And uh, we will be covering Destiny today. And um, let's have a look at some footage of the uh, Twilight Gap Crucible map. Could you maybe give us some, uh, a quick uh, setup, like where we are and um, what's, what's um, special about this map? Sure, so this is a, a derelict human facility just outside the city called the Twilight Gap. It's a site of this historical battle that happened in the universe of the game. Uh, this is a, a really good map with a lot of uh, uh, elevation, a lot of crafty routes. Uh, the mode we're looking at here is control, so the goal is to take uh, control of these territories A, B, and C. Yeah. Uh, if you're holding them, you'll get point modifiers, point additions for kills, so it's a team deathmatch plus control. Um, this is footage, I believe, from uh, the IGN First Look visit. So I apologize in advance. This is probably Dustin or uh, or uh, Ryan or, or Marty playing terribly against the Bungie crew. I offered them to let them film me, but they declined, and then so this is what you get. All right, no problem. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the map's pretty uh, medium-sized, good for infantry play. Uh, you can see one of the Bungie guys came around the corner. I think that was Dustin. Uh, get clocked in the head and take him out. But yeah, our, our Crucible mode is pretty fun. Uh, it's competitive multiplayer. We wanted to feel very old school, bungee, sort of fast pace, arena base. It's all about teamwork, map mm -hmm. control. Uh, this is a 6v6 mode. Uh, our game also features some uh, much more tactical 3v3 modes uh, and games, classic games like Rumble, which is an FFA mode, everybody against each other. So we really wanted to nail the core modes, the modes players expect from a first person shooter make some really great, beautiful maps that players can live in for a long time, learn to love, uh, uh, and you know, learn everything about to sort of gain a bunch of map knowledge, which is really important. You can see this is uh, IGN's first time playing, so they're getting their bearings. You'll see them look around a lot, find some ninja routes maybe to attack B here. We're watching a warlock here with the void grenade. Um, are all different, uh, all different game modes playable on this map? Or? Um, no, so some of the maps will feature uh, uh, some modes. So we have 3v3, which are sort of reserved for our smaller to mid-sized maps. Uh, we also have playlists like Combined Arms that are dedicated to larger maps and vehicles. So those are generally going to be a lot more wide open. Like this map wouldn't be very good for vehicles. There's just not a whole lot of room for them to maneuver around. So are there going to be vehicles on Earth? Because uh, so far it's only been the moon, right? Uh, so in the in the uh, beta, we had uh, two maps with vehicles. Uh, or sorry, one map which was first light. But yeah, we we do have uh, other vehicle maps uh, that we can feature. So uh, one of the things we learned from the beta was the interceptor was a little bit too much of a beast. So uh, we were looking at kills on that. We decided to on first light specifically instead of spawning two at the start of the map, we're going to spawn one in at the middle. We've added a call out from the announcer to let people know when that interceptor is available two teams are going to have to fight over it. Uh, we also reduced the rate of fire and uh, the cannons and their lethality. So the general feedback from the community uh, after the beta, um, what, what was the main, uh, the main, the biggest surprise I mean, for you? Beta was awesome. I think the biggest surprise is that there weren't any big surprises. We had <laughs> 4.6 million players play. We had 850,000 people hit it all at the same time, which is bigger than any other game we've ever done before. We like to do big games at Bungie, so that was a big surprise for us to have that many people play simultaneously. Uh, we did learn a lot. We get data. We did surveys. Uh, we have our website up where we can pull, uh, you know, our users and see what's going on. Uh, uh, from the data, we're able to do things like I said, change the interceptor. We noticed hand cannons and pulse rifles weren't as powerful as we wanted them to be. And players were sort of drawn to the assault rifle more often than not. So we're going to buff those up and make sure people can use those and be effective with them. Um, of course, there's a ton of data that we learned on the back end from our servers and support infrastructure. It's super key for us that this game works flawlessly, that we support it in the way that it deserves. So we've been working a long time on a lot of proprietary technology to make sure this all works behind the scenes. And it was just really great to see a whole bunch of people play, you know, millions of players come in. Uh, I've been going around for the last two years telling people what Destiny is. and. Uh, you know, sometimes it sinks in and sometimes it doesn't, but when you pick up a controller and play, I think people get it right away and understand what we're building. And the good news is now there's the word of mouth that starts happening. People say, oh man, you got to play the beta, or did you play the beta? So uh, people start doing my job for me and that's really cool. <laughs> that's great. So um, you, um, there's uh, pretty much a 10 year plan for, for Destiny ahead of us. And um, two DLCs have been announced. Um, 
can you say anything else that we can uh, look forward to and uh, expect for the next couple of years? Sure. So, uh, yeah, the 10-year the, the plan is really about us having a lot of runway. We wanted to come in with some confidence. Obviously, September 9th is going to be a big day for us. We want to make sure that the first uh, iteration of Destiny is amazing and beats players' expectations. We have high expectations for ourselves as well. We've been working on this for a very long time, so we want to make sure that day one is is a great first step into the world, but it is just a beginning for us. So uh, we announced the Dark Below on Sony stage here at Gamescom. Uh, it's not, we don't treat it as a, as a map pack or DLC, we really see it as an expansion to the world. So we're not getting into too many details right now, we'll save that for post-launch, but what I can say is there'll be new story uh, for players to immerse themselves in, there'll be new cooperative missions, new competitive uh, game, There'll be uh, weapons, armor, and gear. We really wanted to expand every dimension of the game. It was really important for us to, you know, as we look back at our past and realize what we had done really well with Halo, which was support the competitive multiplayer community, we wanted to say, hey, like, how can we take that from, from the beginning with Destiny and, and uh, support every type of player? It was actually one of the coolest things that we saw in the data was, you know, we, we don't see players as like, well, you're a competitive multiplayer player, or you're just a casual player, or you're just a story player. We like players to experience the entirety of the game that we've created. We saw as people continue to play the beta, they sort of harmonized their activities. Yeah. You know, they were spending a lot of time in the tower, a lot of time in story, and that was just the tip of the iceberg for us. So even outside of the expansion pack, there's so much more to do in Destiny than there was in the beta. More multiplayer maps and modes, more strikes, difficulty levels. Uh, we can add gameplay modifiers and things that we call nightfall strikes. Uh, we have the Vault of Glass Raid, which is one of the most intense activities we've ever created. If you played the beta, you got a little taste of the Iron Banner, which is a way we can sort of change all of our multiplayer feel, enable power, let you try your best gear on, uh, put that to the test. If you just want skill-based, flat level playing field, you never have to go into it. Like Destiny, it's always your choice what you're doing, but we think players are going to uh, really get a kick out of it. Great. Um... So you can see here, mobility is pretty key in our game pretty much across all modes. Every every player's got a great mobility mode. Class selection is all about what kind of play you want to, you know, if you want to be uh, a long range player with a golden gun or uh, get up close with an arc blade, you might want to go hunter. Uh, if you want to get up close and personal and solve problems with your fists or a shotgun, armored up, you want to go titan. And if you just want to look better than everybody else, you should go warlock, which is the only correct class. Do you uh, think that, are there going to be any more uh, a bit uh, crazier game modes like the Oddball or... Like what? Sorry? Uh, like any Oddball uh, weird oh, yeah, game. Yeah. So, um, I mean, like I said, this is just the first step. What we wanted to do at the beginning is really lay a foundation for a great competitive multiplayer game. So we've got objective modes uh, uh, like uh, Salvage, uh, where you're going after relics. They'll move around the map, sort of compelling players. Unlike Control, there's a single point for you to capture. You'll deploy your ghost and transmat. Uh, the relics up, and that keeps the, the sort of battle flowing around it and hot points. We also have a mode called Skirmish, which I really like, which is 3v3. And we can do that on maps that typically support 6v6, and it sort of promotes this tactical predator versus prey play. You know, it feels very tight, feels very uh, intense. And in that mode, you can actually resurrect the other uh, uh, players on your team who fall in battle. So it adds this other little wrinkle to the mix. Uh, longer term, of course, we'll be supporting competitive multiplayer like we do everything else in the game. So there's a ton of opportunities for us to inject more modes, more playlists. We wanted to start tight at first and make sure we can support them all with a great population. Matchmaking times are super important for us, making sure people get in, get the game they want quickly. Um, but eventually over time, we'll of course expand that out. Um, and can you say what, what are you most excited about uh because uh, uh, the launch is uh, next month, isn't it? It's less than a month, September 9th, yeah. I mean, for me, it's just so exciting to see people play. You know, as a community manager, and somebody that came into Bungie as a player, there's nothing better than having people playing and telling their own stories, sharing screenshots, making montages, dance videos in the tower. It's just such a <laughs> sea change from, you know, the getting out and telling people or making trailers. All that stuff's fun, and it's, you know, it's, it, it, I love my job, but watching people like take over and start making yeah. content, you know, it's so awesome. Brilliant, well, um, it was a um, pleasure to, to have you, and um, yeah, thank you, and uh, Destiny's out on the... Uh... September 9th, 2014, it's on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, Xbox One, and Xbox 360. All right, then, if you're at the Gamescom at the moment, you should definitely check out uh, the uh, Destiny booth, 
And for anything else on Destiny, stay tuned to iGen.